is operating correctly, a machine for manufacturing tennis balls produces balls with mean weights of 57.6 grams. A sample of eight balls had weight in grams of 57 57.3, 57.4, 57.2, 57.5, 57.4, 57.1, 57.3, and 57.0. Using the appropriate test, determine whether the machine is working properly or whether or not it needs to be adjusted. Use a significance level of 0.05. Okay, so first we need to know what type test we're going to use. Is it going to be one-tailed or is it going to be two-tailed? Our disclaimer detailed to us that it entailed um, whether or not we were looking for whether a population mean was equal. All right, so it did not ask us if the population mean was less than or if the sample mean was greater than or if uh, anything like that. It just asked whether or not our machine was working properly. So here, we could be wrong to the upside and wrong to the downside. So if we were just looking for whether or not it was working properly, then we're using a two-tailed test. Okay, so now because we're testing the two-tailed distribution, we need to set up our null and our alternative hypothesis. We're always going to assume that it's true, that they're telling the truth, until we are able to show, beyond a reasonable doubt, or with statistical significance, that it is not true. So when we set up our null, HO, it's going to be their claim. Okay, it says that the average is 57.6. Now, our alternative, because it's a two-tailed test, means that we could be to the low side or to the high side, and that's how we set up our alternative. Our alternative, HA, that says that mu is not equal to 57.6. Okay. Now that we've determined one tail or two-tailed test, we need to go and see which test statistic we're going to use. All right. So um, you need to ask yourself a series of questions. They can be represented by this flowchart behind me. Um, first, you need to ask, is my standard deviation known? If yes, then you need to follow up with, is it normal? When I say it, I mean the underlying distribution. You can get this with a um, dot plot or some such other things. There are also some um, tests using a computer to find the, whether or not something is normal. Okay. So if your underlying distribution is normal, then you use z-distribution. All right. If you know the standard deviation and it's not normal, can we invoke the central limit theorem? That's what this next question asks. Is n bigger than 30? If we can and n is bigger than 30, then we can use z-table because the central limit theorem allows us to. Okay. If it's not bigger than 30, standard deviation is known. It's not normal. It's not bigger than 30. That's non-parametric. Okay, that means some other bootstrappy kind of method. Now, you also, on your first question, if the standard deviation is known, if it turns out that that answer is no, that brings us to this case. No, the standard deviation is not known. Is it normal? All right, we can get this from previous mentioned methods. If it is normal, then you're going to use the t-distribution. When do I use the t-distribution? When I don't know my standard deviation and its mound shape, then it's okay for the t-distribution. Mm -hmm. If it's not normal, then you need to ask, can I invoke the central limit theorem for sampling distribution? If so, you still don't know the sampling distribution, so it's the t-distribution. Okay. Well, I mean sample standard deviation. Uh -huh. But if it's not big enough to invoke the central limit theorem, then you're out. You're in non-parametrics. Hope this helps. So let's go through ours. All right. Is our standard deviation known? No, we don't know our standard deviation. That puts us in here. Is it normal? We did a dot plot. It is. Well, mound shape it at least. So we can use the t distribution. Awesome. So now we're talking about getting a t score for our traditional method. Here's what I'm looking at is I need the degrees of freedom. I have a sample size of six, so my degrees of freedom are seven. And then this is a two-tailed test, so I'm looking for the area in two tails. 
here I'm looking for the area in two tails to be 0 0.05 as per what they requested. So I see my Z T value is two, three, six, five. Because this is a two-tailed test, I'm gonna have T values to my low side and T values to my high side. What these things do is they represent the border line. What we're gonna do is we're gonna compute a T stat, just like we computed a Z stat. All right, and we're gonna see where that lies in here. And then we're gonna compare that value with the P value approach. All right, let's go with the traditional method. Let's find that T score. My T score is gonna be uh -huh, X, my average, minus the average of the population. Here, it's their claimed average divided by the standard deviation of my sampling distribution. Let's go through and compute that T score now. Here I see my X bar gonna be 57.275 minus the average, oh, there it is. Right, it's the one that they give me, 57.6, and I'm gonna divide it by the standard deviation of that population, or sampling distribution. Right, here I'm using the sampling distribution because I don't know the standard deviation for the population, and that's why we got into this whole T-score mess anyway. 590, uh-huh. So then when I calculate this T value, it appears I'm gonna get, Minus five point five zero eight five. Woo! Now let's see if that falls far enough away, but far enough away from our um, would be average to conclude whether or not we would reject this guy. So then we go. Mm -hmm. Bam! There's one. Wait, wait. Tell me. Where, 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 way over here? I'm like even out of the board. Here, this is minus 0.5. Five, zero, eight, five. Does this land in the rejection region? If I was on this whole borderline concept, this would be way out of the norm. Let's see how far out of the norm it actually is. Let's calculate the p-value. The p-value approach is usually used with technology. So. Why don't we trust our trusty TI-83. Here I am, can you see me? Great. Two of them? Ah, bunny ears. Okay, um, what I wanna do is I wanna stats. Let's go with test. Let's do a t-test. So then we do that t-test. Here, um, the hypothesis states that the average is 57.6. All right, fine. I'm using list one, and I inputted the values ahead of time. The list is list one. We're testing not equals to, or um, two-tailed test. Then we can go down and we can calculate this. Bam, there it is, my p-value. Um, get this nice and close. No reflection, p here. 8.993, look at that, e to the minus four, sure. Let's come back over here. Let's just look at that number for just one second. One, two, three, bam. Eight, nine, nine, three. That's to the minus four. This is my P value. Mm. Now this is our probability of this event occurring, or at least of it being outside. We see it's smaller than our 0 0.05, which is what we were testing against. This was the T value at 0 0.05 on the two-tailed distribution. Yeah. So then our P value, awfully tiny, also rejects it. What is it? It's the actual retail value of the area in both tails together. <clears throat> That's this stuff and this stuff. We see that our probability is so small that in conclusion, we can determine that this tennis ball making machine is not operating correctly. Yeah, and perhaps we need to adjust our dial.